Hi everyone, just wanted to take a minute to talk about dealing with square roots so that you're comfortable solving uh, things using the quadratic formula. So there's three cases that we're going to look at. Um, case one is the most straightforward um, and it'll be with the first set of problems relating to the quadratic formula. That's when you have a perfect square, so something like 81, right? Uh, 81 is 9 times 9. Um, and when you have something like this, Basically, what happens here is that, you know, this is 9 squared, right? 9 squared is 81. Um, so the square root and the square undo each other, so you just have with 9. So anytime you have a perfect square under the radical, um, you they undo each other, and you're just left with the original number. Um, so if you don't know all your perfect squares, I would recommend kind of looking up a list. You know, I think I know up to maybe like 16, 17-ish in there. Uh, after that point, I can usually kind of figure out or identify them. but um, have a list of the ready, and you should be able to get it pretty quickly. All right, number two isn't as bad to work with, um, isn't too bad to work with, I should say. It is a little bit harder sometimes to identify because there's kind of a couple cases you could have. So first of all, if you have just a prime number, you know, I can't simplify this at all. This is just the square root of a prime number, so I can't really do anything with that, right? Um, it's just the square root of 17 is the square root of 17. Some number times some other number is square root of you know, 17. So undoing that doesn't really help. Um, the other case you can have is if you have two primes multiplied together. And that's similar to the case that we had last time uh, in the other video. So if I had something like 33, yeah, I can break it down to 3 and 11, right? 3 times 11 is 33. But I don't know the square root of 3, and I don't know the square root of 11. So that doesn't really help me. So I can't really do anything with this. Um, really, all, all of these will be odd unless it's something just multiplied by 2. That's another prime number multiplied by 2. You know, so something like the square root of 34 you know, that's 17 times 2, but I can't do anything with that still, right? It's still just 34 because I don't know the square root of 17 and I don't know the square root of 2. So those are the first two cases, um, and you should be quite happy when you're dealing with those. Uh, there's not a whole lot extra to do. Um, the only other thing that we need to worry about is if you end up in case 3, where let's say you have something like the square root of 20. Now, 20 is divisible by a perfect square. And that's really what you're looking for. You're looking for whether or not the number inside the radical is divisible by a perfect square. And this is divisible by 4, right? Because it's the same thing as you know, 4 times 5. And this is allowed. You can rewrite it this way, as long as 4 times 5 is 20, which it is. And I know the square root of 4. It's 2. I don't know what the square root of 5 is, but I do know the square root of 4 is 2. So I can just leave this alone. All right? Now, you could do this as many times as you wanted. For example, you know, if I did the square root of 80, you know, I know that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 20. Um, square root of 4, we just said, is, we know that's 2. The square root of 20, I just did up here. It's, you know, 2 square root to 5. But ultimately, if I did it again, I would have gotten the 4, square root of 4 times the square root of 5. So this is essentially times 2 square root of 5. And now these two multiply. The 2 does not multiply times the 5, just times the 2. So it is 4 square roots of 5. All right, so do be careful. If it's outside of the radical, outside of the square root symbol, do not apply it to what's inside. So like if I was dividing this, you know, when you're doing the quadratic formula, you're going to be dividing by at least, you know, 2a, so usually about 2. Um, if I were to divide this, it wouldn't be the square root of 5 in, in, the parenth uh, in the radical still have the 2 underneath. No, no, no. The 2 will only affect the 4, right? So 4 square roots of 5, you know, over 2 is 2 square roots of 5. I didn't touch the square root of 5. We leave that alone. We just apply the 2 to the 4, all right? Um, one other thing to notice when we're dealing with a problem like this. The square root of 80, as you saw, it ended up being 4 square roots of 5. And when I took out the 4, it didn't necessarily help me. I mean, it helped me, but it wasn't the, the quickest way. I also could have done it this way. It would have been the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. And that also would have given me my 4 square roots of 5. So basically what you're going to do to figure out how to do this is take the number underneath and divide it by perfect squares. And if one of them works, take it out.
and it 